Hello everyone and welcome to RSS Interstellar with Exoplanets or everything I can do with KSB Interstellar basically. So let us verify that we have exoplanets first uh, because that is a bit of a trick in KSB 1.12 to have exoplanets with real solar system and we just want to make sure that that's sort of working but it's probably going to be super glitchy, let's face it. So we have Tau Ceti over there, Proxima Centauri, uh, Alpha Centauri, Bernard Star, Trappist-1, obviously, the Kerbal system, I think of it, and uh, Tea Garden Star, and those are our potential targets. Uh, whether that all works out for us is a whole question, but we have them. We have our warp test article currently orbiting Alpha Centauri in this particular save, so I tested it out and we got something there. Let's take a look at it now. But my goal here is to try out all of the KSP Interstellar stuff in turn to see what the heck they do because there's so many of them. This was our warp drive ship currently in orbit around Alpha Centauri, which is there. There it is. And well, it's got a lot of antimatter and such. It's about 70 tons right now, but it's just a test ship. It doesn't have any any space for payload. It's just it's just an engine. We we won't do warp drives. We won't do warp drives. We'll let's do something else. But what kind of engine should we use? Okay. Well, this is the problem with having real exoplanets, I suppose. Let me just go into the VAB and come out again. It is not so simple to have other uh, other star systems and when we tried to go to Alpha Centauri, hmm, I don't believe there's a problem. <laughs> uh, hold on. Um, when we tried to go to Alpha Centauri, the game crashed on the way, but it happened to have had a save where I could pick up from in order to continue the journey. So it's sort of like that. Let me just, uh, oh, the station carrier, let's, let's load up the station carrier. Please let the flight scene be alright, please let the flight scene be alright. This has got to be a real short thing. Okay, okay, we're good. This way. Let's go in alphabetical order. Timberwin rotating fluidized bed reactor engine. I thought the Timberwin was just a particle bed one, not a rotating fluid fluidized bed particle reactor. That doesn't sound like a particle bed reactor. Anyway, I, I use the Timberwind all the time, so... That isn't special enough. So, maybe Resisto Jet RCS is important. But I'm looking for an engine, not the... not that. Not the warp engine. Attila Thruster we've used before. Arcjet RCS. Maybe we should just have a little probe that has Resistojet RCS and Arcjet RCS, so I know how to do those things. Does it have the Arcjets in? Yeah, it does have. It has the RCS built in. Currently, it uses uh, the Hydrazine. It seems to have little engines at the bottom, too, and they're all blue. The Resisto Jet RCS is blue. What makes them think that the nozzles will be blue? It looks like Starliner, doesn't it? It does have tweak scale. Okay, so we need something to put with it. It's, it's like a service module, so I guess we need a pod. So this, this is going to be me learning how to use ArcJet RCS service tank. I don't know if that's appropriate for going interstellar, but we might as well cover everything. That's what I want to do. Cover all the parts in case be interstellar. Okay, so weirdly having the Lynx spacecraft on this Arcjet RCS service tank. Now, what would be the best propellant to use with the Arcjet RCS service tank? Well. It's just RCS though. 
It doesn't read any delta V. <laughs> It says uh, propellant name liquid hydrogen up there, but we've got liquid ammonia here, so that's not right. Next, let's see. Uh, liquid ammonia still doesn't read any delta V. It says 1800 ISP, and it's got a lot of liquid ammonia. Anyway, it's too heavy right now. 42 tons. We definitely don't need all that. We probably need... let's just put solar panels, before I forget. I don't know how much the Arcjet needs. So let's just go with overwhelming solar panelry. As far as set-piece tanks, we do have the Sujita rocket. So this is... Lynx Arcjet RCS test. Ignition. Off we go. Oh, I forgot the separatrons on that stage. Okay. And then we have to we're gonna test out everything else in KSP Interstellar to see what it does. And then we're, we're going to decide what we're going to use to get to other star systems. We'll probably have different kinds of ships, not just a warp drive ship. A warp drive is easy. We'll, we'll see what else could be viable. Okay, that's that. Separation. Oh, okay, so it's using RCS like that. It's got 160 kilonewtons. So it's very powerful. It consumes some power. I mean, it says it, it consumption zero watts out of 100 megawatts. I don't know where the megawatts are coming from. Let's see. Now, as far as our liquid ammonia consumption, we've already used half of it. We're in orbit, though. Okay, but it's way too powerful. So we're going to thrust limit this. Go retrograde. It's 5 kilonewtons when I thrust limit it to 2.5. Well, let, let's accumulate some megajoules and see, okay? Because it's probably using megajoules. Let me not use that. Okay, and we've limited the thrust so we can see for a long time. Okay, but then... Okay, so when, when it loses the megajoules, it goes to... Pa is powered false and has the lower ISP. So we need a lot more power. Really, so this service tank, even though it's configured and it looks like a CSD-100 service tank, what we would want to use it for is something like with a reactor. I mean, for something with this kind of service module, when we have four panels each producing four kilowatts, that's a lot of power, right? We're talking about 16 kilowatts Though, I don't know what the energy flow up there is. But, as far as Interstellar is concerned, we've got 16 kilowatts. And it's putting that into the megajoules. But, I think what's happened is, because we had to scale up the tank for the pod, it's also scaled up the energy consumption by quite a lot. But, see, so, I mean, the fundamental problem with this is they tried to make it look like a CST-100 service module. But there's no way it can act like a <laughs> service module like this. It's way too powerful and consumes way too much power. I mean, it consumes... It, it really needs, like, a reactor or something. Okay, next... These Resistojet RCS, though, they're smaller. They're two. Hydrogen peroxide we can do. Maximum ISP. Well, that's our hydrogen gas, helium-4 ammonia gas. But that takes a lot of volume. It likes gases, methane gas. But we can have the gases in a compressed tank kind of thing. Hydrazine, it says it's got 451. 
Does it really? And how much power would that take? Okay, well, we're gonna put the normal solar panels. It's probably better. Okay, so if it was one of these... It would get us 641 seconds of delta V. Yeah, sorry, 641 meters per second of delta V in two hours, which is fine for for lower orbit and everything. We'll see how the resistor jets do. Okay, ignition, launch. At least launching things is fun. Okay. We are deorbiting this. Okay, that should be the resistor jets on. Indeed. Oh, come on. Okay, so they, they need power. Okay, I, I think... It's either 451 or 146. <laughs> let's, uh, let's extend the solar panels. And try and get all the... But we don't have much megajoule capacity here. How are we going to get enough megajoules for it to work? At least the other one, there seemed to be megajoule capacity. In the service module. Do we need like a megajoule battery? I think we need a megajoule battery. Because there's no megajoule storage with these. So they instantly go back to 146. Okay. Let me find a megajoule battery. We won't launch it again. Megajoule supercapacitator. Fine. Are you... You contain 24 megajoules. You contain 90 megajoules. We are learning things. It's fine. Okay, we're just gonna cheat this into orbit. Let's see how long it takes to get the megajoules, whether this is enough megajoule capacity to keep us at 451. One megawatt would supply one kilo, sorry, one kilowatt of power will supply one kilojoule every second. So it would take a thousand seconds to get a megajoule. We have, we've filled up on megajoules on the ground already, so... And that was 90 megajoules. Did you see how quickly those 90 megajoules went? Okay, let's thrust limit these quite a lot. They consume 100 kilowatts. Uh, let's say six six percent. No, let's make it a round number. One twentieth, five percent. Hopefully, they're all on the same thing. Okay, so let's extend the solar panels. Without a reactor, these are not going to be useful, though. Even with a reactor, it'd have to be a very powerful reactor. Let's just wait and accumulate some megajoules. We are in orbit, after all. Each orbit will get us... Uh, about half the capacity. It's like... Well, if we point it directly at the sun, maybe more than that. Okay. Back in daylight. Okay, so now it's using 800 K... 
kilowatts to give us 0.13 kilonewtons. And at that, 800 kilowatts to give us 0.13 kilonewtons, it's consuming it like this. So to turn prograde, we use all of those megajoules. And remember, it's still actually consuming the hydrazine. It's just at 451 instead of uh, normal hydrazine would be like 160 to 2, maybe 160, let's say. Okay, well, we know what these resistojet RCS do. <laughs> uh, let's let's revert. Now, hydrazine isn't necessarily the best thing. Let's see what other propellants there were. 236 with krypton, 213 with carbon dioxide gas. Hydrogen gas is 1000, but it's gas. So you have to have compressed tanks and all that, and it's heavy. Helium-4 liquid, which is at least more storable, is 709. And ammonia gas, 617. A lot of them aren't even as good as the hydrazine. Methane gas is 780. Nitrogen gas. Well, that's the best you'll ever see from nitrogen gas. Anyway, uh, 461. But yeah, that's a lot of power consumption. Okay, so we've, we we know about resisto jets. What's next? Uh, Timberwind, I've done before. That's just another resisto jet. Ablative laser nozzle. Okay, ablative laser nozzle. This needs beamed power. Let's let's launch the launch a beamed powered thing first. It's PVC is the ablative propellant. Must be powered by laser beams. What else does this need? It's using polyvinyl chloride. Best used as clothing, <laughs> but uh, um, as a thing, and it's producing a lot of thrust. So we don't need it so big. Fine. 20 kilonewtons. And it is... It is only able to use, I think, the PVC on it. I don't know how long that will last, but it will need... a... beamed power thingy. We don't need as much power anymore here. But we will put some other RCS in this. Beam generators. Well, beam power transmitters. Okay, anyway, let's... Diode laser array beam producer. Microwave beam generator. Now, it said beam, but it didn't say what kind of beam it wanted, did it? All bandwidths. So I guess this is okay. Lots of beam efficiencies. Tweak scale, megajoules, that doesn't have any built-in. Source, a reactor. Okay, well, I was wondering about that. Electric power generators. So we need a reactor and a generator. Or I guess we'll do molten salt reactor. Fine. Molten salt reactor. Generator. Not thermal power. Um... Oh no, the thermal power is exactly right. Okay, thermal power generator. Beam power transmitter. Why can't we just have one? Okay, this is a diode laser array. So I guess we should have a diode beam power laser. Well, that looks like a laser to me. That's also a beam... That's also a producer. That's also a producer. So why isn't it under producers? Pivot uh, includes an integrated diode laser array to save weight, although more efficient than other early beam power transmitters. Well, it seems to be a combo package, but it probably should be under beam generators then. Requires 200,000 per second electric charge. <laughs> this outputs 8 kilowatts because it's a deployable solar panel. I don't understand. I thought it was a mirror. This, can you provide 200,000? Technically, 450,000 is what it outputs. But then it has to go through this converter. Off-screen power generation, just 100 kilowatts. 
maximum generator power 1000 megawatts why are you only giving me 100 kilowatts when you, you can potentially give me one gigawatt bad thing mirrors beam power okay so it it bounces the beam power okay fine so we want this thing first but then this thing is microwave and the other thing is not microwave so this can only bounce infrared but this is a microwave one so we'll need this microwave trans transducer to relay it i guess okay all forms of beam power well this one we can pick long infrared short infrared near infrared okay so which one's better power to beam efficiency low power to beam efficiency is highest for far infrared so we'll just stick to long infrared it's got 80 percent power to beam efficiency blue it's not blue instead of green okay all right so let's have a core and ESB installer has its own core thingy computer core and let's also have a tank to point it in directions. We've got a reactor now. I guess we can put the resistor jets. <laughs> no, but they'll consume power that we don't want it to consume because it should be lasering things. So, hmm. But meh. Uh, let's let's just get one. It's simple. Let's get that silly service module. Liquid methane. Let's just go with liquid methane. We want this to have very low thrust. Which is supposed to point in the right direction. Okay, so there's 35 tons this. Since it's got to be a permanent fixture, we need to launch it properly. It's not something that we're just going to revert. It's going to be used for power things in the future. Because a rocket can get to where it's going. We just need it high. We don't need it exactly GTO, right? I mean, it's not going to sue us if it's not exactly GTO. Okay. Beam power laser one. Because <laughs> say. Get those. Okay, you arc jet thingy. With liquid methane. Okay, it's giving us one kill newton. I can throttle up a bit. Whereas our mega jewels are fluctuating but not going down. Okay, it says RCS ISP 259.49. Okay, it looks like we can sustain four kilonewtons. We haven't turned on the laser yet, though. Oh, oh, that, that knocked our thermal power quite a lot. For some reason, it dips the megajoules, but it doesn't, like, deplete them. Yeah, it dips the megajoules, but it doesn't fully deplete them. But that thermal power is going down, so I guess if I put it to the point where that thermal power... Well, I guess we can't. So we can do 100% on these without over outstripping the reactor, and we can get 2,549.5 seconds of ISP out of liquid methane. Sixty-eight kilonewtons. 
Oh, Mega Jewels have gone. Mega Jewels have gone. Come back, Mega Jewels. So if if that is ten tons of liquid methane, let me try and get my delta V here. We have eight thousand four hundred and seventeen meters per second at this current thrust, forty kilonewtons. Which is not bad. We should keep that in mind. But a hundred megawatt reactor is a very powerful reactor. Well, so we could get higher pretty arbitrarily. I, I wonder if this actually works during time warp or not. Probably not, right? It's not like that kind of thing. I guess we should check it out though, just in case. Let's say I have SAS on. Okay, well, it doesn't want to do that, so yep, I guess not. I noticed the RCS seems fluctuating. Seems to be fluctuating. Well, we lost Mega Jewels. There we go. Why does it sometimes have enough Mega Jewels and other times not have Mega Jewels? I think we'll leave it here, though. Let's just set it there. And we are going to activate transmitter. Uh oh. All our mega jewels have gone. <laughs> um, okay, well, no, they're 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 okay. They're okay. All right, so it's transmitting power somewhere. Now we are going to launch the little ablative laser ablative nozzle thing, and we'll have to pick this up somehow. I have no idea how that works. Well, I guess we'll we'll cheat into orbit and see. Let's just make this quick. Okay, now are you in line of sight of the thingy? Not quite. It's got it's got a receiver and it's reading some power apparently. Okie dokie. Let's turn off. The, let's keep the RCS on. We'll probably it'll be obvious whether this works or not. It says right now seven meters per second in seven years. Please don't burn the polyvinyl chloride that slowly. Okay, well it's burning it much faster, but it's only one kilonewton. It says maximum thrust would be seven, twenty-seven kilonewtons. It is. Supposedly getting 704 seconds of ISP, but our orbit is not changing very much. It seems to be one kilonewton, and the polyvinyl chloride is going really fast. Now, would something else help? Power receiver interface. Beam Power Laser Kasei is uh, sending, it says 70% facing, transmit power is 165 megawatts. That's its power, network power 165 megawatts. Consumed power, 4 megawatts. But with that 4 megawatts, it's getting... One kilonewton. And using the PVC really fast. Now, why is the network efficiency 2.36%? Why are we only getting 4 megawatts out of the 165? Now, if we do get the 165, does that mean that our propellant will be used faster? Or does that mean our propellant will just get more thrust? Seems like we would have to be using the propellant faster as well. So there's not necessarily any delta V benefit from getting more power, is there? Especially since we're almost through of our fuel. Hmm. Okay, 
So right now, I don't see a use case for the ablative laser nozzle. Oh, but it does depend on how we turn. Oops, come back. See, now we're not getting anything. But we get more power, and we get less thrust. Right? We're getting 4 megawatts compared to the 1 megawatt we were getting before with the other panels. But we're getting a maximum of 1 kilonewton. We got to 1.5 kilonewtons before with lower network efficiency, lower consumed power. But now let me turn a bit. Consumed power is changing, and the thrust is going down, and then it stops. But then eventually the pod itself will block the beam. No, it doesn't seem to. Right now we're going practically retrograde. So I don't know why in some angles it has a drop-off. No, that right there it's too much. And what do we do to boost network efficiency? Is it even a good idea? Should we pack in some more polyvinyl chloride? So many questions. Uh, obviously we can scale it up, but should we? <laughs> Fine, we'll try one more time with the bigger nozzle. With 1000 kilonewtons of thrust. Let's just thrust, uh, well, we'll do that outside. I would have thought that we would be already receiving power, but... Okay, well, let's turn to prograde. Oh, there we go. Why is it consuming power when I haven't throttled up? Network efficiency 5%. So now we've got double the power. We've got a lot of polyvinyl chloride. We've got 379 meters per second in one hour, two kilonewtons. We don't have arc jets, we only have regular RCS thrusters. But we can only use this 377 meters per second in certain directions. Because <laughs> if we tilt like this, for instance, we now no longer have that. But that's fine, because our RCS is actually just as powerful as that thing. How heavy was this? So, I mean, we have this. I mean, I get uh, it's two kilonewtons, though. It's not that much. But I guess it's much more about well, it's just carrying more polyvinyl chloride. The reason we have more delta V is because we have more polyvinyl chloride. It's just a 2 kilonewton thruster. If we had more polyvinyl chloride in a tank or something, that would work out for us. Uh, the 1 kilonewton one would be just fine, and it'd be smaller. How heavy is this enlarged one? So this thing is... <laughs> 3 point what tons? 3.5 tons. 3.5 tons! And it gets us 300 meters per second with its polyvinyl chloride. I don't know about that. Now, of course, it's meant to have 1,700 kilonewtons, but we only got two out of it. Two. I have no idea how to get 1,700 kilonewtons out of this thing. So, many questions about this ablative laser nozzle. <laughs>